Listen, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, the Apostle Paul writes, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. So the Bible is very clear that in the last days the world will be filled with difficulties, things we have never seen before, which is what's happening today. We are witnessing it right before our eyes. No one alive today has seen anything like this, the coronavirus. And it's affecting everything we do, the way we live, the way we act, the way we do things. And be honest with you, I, I respected President Trump's thing to say I'm encouraging people, not mandating people. And I, I think we should honor that. But I think we should continue to pray for our leaders because some leaders love power more than they love anything else. And I think we should pray that, that, that our rights aren't being taken away, not even for a moment. But I do think we should all be wise. We should all do our due diligence to, to be safe. But the Holy Spirit was so specific here and committed to making sure that we understood what will occur in the last days. He was very specific. Paul wrote these words inspired by the Holy Spirit. See, we have been in the last days since Jesus was resurrected. But today, I believe we're in the last of the last days. So when the apostle Paul writes almost 2,000 years ago, right at 2,000 years ago, this know also that in the last days, he's talking about the last of the last days. And I do believe we're in the last of the last days. It was the Holy Spirit that inspired these words that he wrote. And when he says know also, the word no means there is something that must be known, must be recognized, and must be acknowledged. So Paul was saying, this know also. And it means that something that must be known. You must know this. You must recognize this. And you must be willing to acknowledge what he's saying. In the last days, there will come perilous times. So God wants us to have this knowledge. He wants us to understand the times. So when he says last days, again, he's referring to the last of the last days. In other words, the final end. And it won't be final until Jesus comes back. That's the reality of this. All of this stuff is part of perilous times happening in the last of the last days until the final end. So Paul is teaching us we must understand the times and we must understand what to expect. So we shouldn't be shocked at some of this. Perilous means hurtful, harmful, dangerous, unpredictable, uncontrollable. High risks periods of time will come. And folks, we don't have to wonder if they're going to come. They're here. No time in my lifetime or in recent history has anything happened like this in the world. I can't remember time. And what's crazy is as we go through this, there's no one to go ask. There's no one to go say, hey, what did you do when? Because it's never happened in our lifetime. There's nobody alive that has experienced what we're experiencing today. That would even understand what to do because no one knows what to do. I, that's why we're praying for our leaders. I don't even think they all know what to do. And they could be overreacting. And, and, they, and, it, and it could be an overreaction. Because the way the human body is designed is that when we have a sickness, you know, back in the day when I was a kid, if my brothers got smallpox, or chickenpox, not small chickenpox, my mom put us in the room with them. So we could all get it at the same time. And then our body built up antibodies to fight it. So I don't get it anymore. I got it once. But it's funny. What does your brother have? He got the measles. Yeah, go sit. Go play with him. Go over there. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Some of us older folks will. Today people are like, oh, why didn't you separate them? Because our parents had five kids and they said, I want every one of you to get it at the same time. 
You can all moan and groan and cry and itch or whatever. And so we're, we're living in difficult times where people just don't know what to do. They don't know how to respond. They don't know how to act. They don't know what to do, so they're doing the best they can. I, I believe that. And we ought to be wise in our decision making. But we've got to come back to the Word and say, what is happening, God? Because God is the one that brings comfort and peace to our hearts and minds. So he's saying, you got to know this. you got to acknowledge it. you got to understand it. You have to know this. In the last of the last days, right before the final end, perilous times are coming, hurtful times, harmful times, dangerous times, scary times, unpredictable times, uncontrollable times, high-risk periods of time will come. He's saying, don't be caught off guard. You have to know this is going to happen. So we know these things have come and now are upon us. See, these weren't meant to scare us or create fear in us, and that's huge. It was meant to prepare us. So why should I be fearful or afraid if God was forewarning Steve is going to happen? I don't know if God talks like that, but he said, dude, it's going to happen. I don't know why you're mystified by it, why you're so fearful, why you're so scared. I I don't want to scare you. I wanted to prepare you that these times will come. And if you know they're going to come, you won't be so moved when they happen. I mean, think about what America has done, though. I think it was Governor Cuomo the other day that said, it's like someone has the earth and the world in its hands and shaking it like a snow globe. I mean, to me, that was almost prophetic, that we need to wake up. We need to wake up that there's a God in heaven. And we need to wake up that humanity is so frail in reality that something like this could cause such panic that it would try to shut down every part of our lives. It's unpredictable. We need to understand that without God, we're helpless. Without God, we're going to fear. You're going to be afraid. That's why we got to continue to tell our friends and our family about God. If they say, why aren't you fearful? Because God prepared me for this. His word did. His word taught me that these things were going to happen. That there were going to be these kinds of times. Some translations use the word difficulties instead of perilous. I like perilous just because it sounds more cryptic. Then it's like, oh man. Difficulties sound like, okay, sir. Perilous sounds like, pay attention. Something bad is going to happen. And so something bad has happened. But God is still on the throne. And if we continue to serve him and honor him, he'll help us. He'll help us. And so we don't get mad at people for the decisions they make, but we do have to hold our leaders accountable for the decisions they make. That's why it's we the people, not we the politicians. It's we the people. But Paul wasn't trying to scare anybody. He was purposing to prepare us for us to be ready so we would be ready to help others not hide out but stand out. So we're living in an age marked by perilous times. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 24, verses 6, 7, and 8, I believe I'm read. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The word pestilence means plagues, and that's what we're experiencing today. He said, don't be troubled. These things will happen, but the end's not yet, but it's getting close. We're in the last of the last days. We're not in the last day, the last of the last days. And Jesus spoke to it also. So when Paul says, man, I got, you got to know this. You got to understand this. You have to know that in the last days, perilous times will come. Jesus said, there'll be wars and rumors of war. We've seen a nation will rise up against nation. And there will be famines. We see it around the world. Pestilences and earthquakes in various places. We've seen all these. Now we're seeing something that's affecting all of our lives. 
pestilence, a plague. So the coronavirus is a plague. COVID-19 is a plague. And it's sweeping the world. And so we have to decide how are we going to live. I don't believe Jesus intended the church just to hide out. I don't believe he ever intended the church just to be afraid. And I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about you and I. We're the church. We meet in a building we call the house of God. But really, without anybody in, in, a, in a church or in this place, it's just a building. When the church comes together, that's when it comes alive. And so you and I have a responsibility. First of all, to know that these things are going to happen. So we know we are prepared. We're not caught off guard. And so as I was thinking about this the other day, I was asked a question by someone. And this is how I responded. See, you hear from major leaders, you hear from people, and I've heard it most of my Christian life, that when people come to crisis, they'll run to the church. Really, scripturally, it doesn't say that. Nowhere does God say that. And I believe that the Spirit of God gave me a thought and said, people aren't going to run to us because we, we're not even allowed to have service. But they may be curious. And so we need to run to them. We need to go reach them. We need to go talk to them. If it's true that 53% of America, that God never even crossed their mind, are going to church, and people have a different relationship with God and church, Sometimes they see church as this foreign entity and God is, you know, good, but, or something good, but church is a foreign entity, but Jesus is the head of the church. And so I believe that if, if it was true that that was going to happen, then I believe the authorities at B would say the places that need to stay open is the place that can give hope to the hopeless. That's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I believe. And so I believe the church will run to them, to the world, people who are lost, people who need God, because we know they need God. Maybe they don't understand that. Or maybe they will ask questions like, I know you're a believer, but tell me why you're acting this way and everybody else is acting that way. Tell me why you don't seem fearful, but everybody else seems fearful. Because really in history, you don't see that happening. In 9-11, people ran to the church for approximately two weeks, and then they left. So you and I need to decide. We can't wait for people to come to us. We need to go to them. One of the things here we've done at Legacy is we have been calling and talking to the elderly. They're one of the groups of people most susceptible to this disease where it can, where it can kill them. And so we have passed out right at 190 care packages shown up and said, here, here you go. My wife the other day blessed me. We have neighbors that, that we, we have, and, and, and there's been some interesting times with them, and we always purpose to get along, and so do they, I think. But she said, Steve, I just went over and knocked on the door because they're elderly. And she said, hey, do you need anything? Can I get you anything? And she said the, guy, the man was so kind and so grateful. He said, thanks, but my daughter's taking care of us. See, you have neighbors also. You have people that are locked in. And, and, and really don't want to get out. And so you can go to them. That's how we, the church goes to people and knock on their door and say, hey, can we help you? Is there anything we can do for you? We know you're a little elderly. Is there anything? I can call the church. We can bring you a care package. Just something to say that God is real and we care. That's how we let our light shine. Not that we be glorified, but that God be glorified. That's how we show we care. That's how the church operates. The church will never close down because we're the church. And I'm never going to stop being the church. Uh, hopefully I'll never stop being what God wants me to be. And it doesn't mean you have to be perfect either. Wh wh whoever's listening, you just got to be willing. But pastor, how can I be used of God when I'm so messed up? God, will, God has used and will use the most messed up people if they're just willing. So if you're messed up, join us. Myself, I'll speak for me, who's been messed up most of my life. All you got to do is ask my wife. She'll tell you, man, he's messed up. And let's just serve the Lord. Let's serve people. 
Let's do good to them when it's within our means and our power to do good to them. So I don't, I don't know that people are going to just knock our doors down because they're not knocking the doors down. But I do believe we can knock on their door and say, you know what? Can I help you in any way? Can I pray with you? And if they ask, why would you do this? Say, because I believe in God. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe God would want me to. That's how we're the church. We go to them. See, I don't, see the, I don't believe the world sees the church as church people see the church. We see it as our place of hope and refuge and comfort and a community of believers. So I, I believe we must run to them. We must reach out, not in fear, but faith. Believing in a God that is more than enough. And that's who our God is. At the beginning of the year, I believe God gave me a word and, and how I, we, none of us had any idea we would be in this place today in the middle of March. When 2020 started, it started out with so much promise. The economy booming. The Dow soaring. S&P soaring. And in a moment of time, things came, have come to a halt. And I didn't know then when I really saw God and said, God, what is the thought for 2020? And I believe he gave me this thought. It's the year of persevering with reward. Little did I know or anybody know that we were going to live in a time where we're really going to have to persevere. We're really going to have to stand. And persevering is not good things. It's when it's tough. I don't have to persevere when I like it and it's easy. That's just flowing. I just, you know, you float. As Christians, I guess, we float around and everything's cool. We talk cool, you know, and hey, what's going on? You know, now we're going to learn a bunch of new handshakes, you know. People are going to stop shaking hands forever now, probably fist pump and elbow. A lady showed me the chicken wing the other day. I'm like, man, I'm learning. I mean, they aren't even naming these things. But we persevere when it's tough, when there's perilous times, hurtful times, dangerous times, unpredictable times. So I want you to be encouraged. God said that at the beginning of the year, and I think it's for us to be encouraged. That, yep, I'm going to persevere, God. I'm going to persevere. I don't care what I feel. I'm going to persevere because I know at the end there's some kind of blessing coming. We're going to end up okay. We're going to end up landing on our feet and saying, "Woo, we made it through that. And my God, I believe in you more than I did before it happened because we held fast. So hold fast. It's not a time to shrink. It's not a time to come after God. It's a time to ask God for wisdom. And I feel like for some of us, it's going to be a time of reflection because we're going to see how things go. And then I believe God's going to give some of us great wisdom. Great wisdom in how to do things differently because we're learning that right now as a church. Our online experience will always be different from this moment on because we're learning how to do it better. And we want you to have a great experience and stay connected with us. We want to stay connected with you. We want you to think you're ever out there in the wilderness by yourself. And so I think it's a time of reflection. Okay, God, this is drying up. What, what is it I need to see? See, I think God used these times that the devil means for evil. God used them for good. What is it I need to see? What is it that you want me to see? And then you begin to look, and you'll do things different than you did, and it'll be a greater blessing to you. Because you'll say, I'll never get caught in that situation again. Through the whole time God's sustaining us, holding us in his hand and saying, think, seek me. And I'm telling you, I believe it stronger now than I did when I got the thought. Because little did I know, because I'm thinking perseverance, okay, we got to go through, you know, people don't like me or people said something bad to me. My boss was mean to me. That kind of perseverance. Oh, no. I think I had a whole nother thought. Said, oh, no, Steve. You're going to have to persevere in ways you never thought. Because I have to watch my attitude and my mindset when certain leaders get up and talk crazy stuff. I have to be careful. Because I'm like, what? You know, like, for instance, what does the transfer of guns or the selling and buying of guns have anything to do with the coronavirus? But, oh, no, we're going to stop that. Why? I thought you were about the people. 
Why would we stop that? What does, we can't shoot the virus. I mean, what, what does the Second Amendment have to do with a plague? You see, those are the kind of things that I think I got to watch myself like, okay, calm down. Persevere, Steve. Persevere. There's going to be a blessing somewhere down the road. We may not be able to see the blessing, but it's there. And here's what we know. God sees it. God knows right where it's at. So hold fast today. Hold on tighter to God than you've ever held on. Because I'm telling you, I believe it'd be worth it. At the end, you'll say it was hard, it was difficult, but it was worth it. It was worth it. It was worth it to me because God came through like he said he would. So we know we're going to experience these times. This probably won't be the, it's not the first, it won't be the last. And hopefully, you know, if something like this happens again in our country, we'll have a better handle on it because we do learn. But God's still on the throne. That's who we look to. That's who our source is. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for being here. I thank you for being with all of us. Thank you for teaching us. Holy Spirit, I thank you these words. When I was thinking about this message, was meant to comfort and to prepare us and say, okay, God said it was going to happen. He's not moved, so I shouldn't be moved. So, God, give us strength inside our hearts and minds. Give us peace that passes all understanding. We do not have the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. God, we're going to be okay. Those that love you, those that serve you, they're going to be okay because you take care of your own. So we thank you as your children, we come to you. And we humble and submit our wills to your will. And Father, you, you give us wisdom. You let us see what we need to see. You let us know the things we need to know moving forward so we'll be better prepared whenever the next thing comes along. So thank you, Father, for teaching us. Thank you for preparing us so we wouldn't be caught off guard. Thank you for encouraging us with your word because your word is power and life to my life. In Jesus' name. Listen, wherever you're watching this at, wherever you're viewing this, the whole reality of God or having a relationship with God comes through Jesus Christ. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. And so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Wherever you're at, just be still for a moment. If you're with family and friends and there's someone there that needs to get right with God, let's just be a comfort to them and a support. But if you need to get right with God, this is your moment to do so. But pastor, I haven't really served him and now I'm going to serve him when the crisis times. He doesn't worry about when you come to him. He just wants you to come to him. He's not concerned with your past as much as he's concerned with your future. So now it's time to come home if you need to come home. If you've walked with him and walked away, this is your moment to come home. This is your moment to get it right. For all who are listening, and the peace of God will come into you. And the word of God will be open to you and you'll be like, man, I get it. It doesn't mean this is not going to be a hard time because perilous means difficult time. But we're going to persevere through it because we know God's got something for us at the end. And even during it, you'll see the hand of God move. If you're out there and you've never given God permission in your life, you're watching with us, you're part of our family today, and you've never given your heart to Christ. You've never truly believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth with the intention to follow him. It's not enough just to say, I said a prayer. You can pray all you want, and if you don't do anything with it, it's just talking. But have you prayed with the thought, I am now going to follow him. I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to do what he asked me to do. Have you done that? And if you haven't, I want to pray with you right where you're at. All over this place, we just be still for a moment. And I'm going to lead you to prayer that I want you to pray out loud. And if you're with some people, don't, don't be shy. Don't, don't feel bad. This is the greatest moment of the rest of your life if you're allowed to be. You pray, and, and if you're with people that need prayer, you pray with them so they're not praying by themselves. And everybody that's listening to me, if you need to get right with God, you need to pray this prayer with me. Would you pray with me? Would you pray, Father, I choose to believe in Jesus. And I believe he is your son. And I believe he is Lord of all. So now, according to your word, when you said if you believe in your heart 
Right now, I believe in my heart. And now I willingly confess with my mouth, Jesus, be Lord of my life. I want to, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for forgiving me. I choose to believe. In Jesus, I'm yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Well, Hen, who's passionate but not very powerful, now he moves into this mighty warrior who wears armor and who fights out of a fort. And now we're talking about ability. So God has the willingness and he has the ability to fight for his people.